Hello everyone. In this video I would like to talk about my timeline. This timeline is chronological. It is not to scale. It starts out at the cross that happens at Jesus' birth. It covers 2014 years and then we get into the year 2014, 2015, 2017, 18, 19, 20, and 21. Everything above the line are the signs we see in the heavens. Everything below the timeline are my videos or the descriptions of things happening or the day counts. If you are new here, after this video is over, I would suggest watching my What is Revelation 12 video. You can find this and all my other videos at this site. I go too slow for you to see me at YouTube. If you go to YouTube and just type in I go too into their search engine, it will bring me up. The signs above the timeline are connected to things below it that describe it, such as my videos or all of this information on May 14th as well as my videos. The September 23rd is connected with all the day counts and this video and this one. The Revelation 15.1 Great and Marvelous Sign. The seven angels are connected to this video and you should watch this one before you watch this one. This one has to do with the seventh angel and this video describes how we get the day counts. This cross is also connected to those day counts. Now I want to mention why I included this cross back at Jesus' birth. It's because this cross is connected to when Jesus first came to the earth. This cross is connected with Jesus coming back to the earth. I talk about both of these crosses and the differences between them in my cross video. The four main signs at the top are all screenshots out of the astronomy program Stellarium. I have doctored them up so that you can see them. I added the red lines and all the words. Okay, so that kind of explains the timeline. Now I want to explain how I got into this and how I found all of these signs. It was back around the beginning of 2013 and some of my friends who do what I do were trying to pin the tail on the fiery red dragon from Revelation 12, 3 to 5. And I watched their videos and it just didn't fit. They didn't have a fiery red dragon to start it off with and they were missing many of the pieces. So I started looking around and a little over two weeks after the Revelation 12 sign, I found what I believe to be the fiery red dragon. This is your fiery red dragon. It's the sun. And after I found this piece, all the rest of the pieces fell into place like dominoes. In this video, I show you the seven heads with the seven crowns, the ten horns, I show you how the dragon's tail draws down a third of the stars, and how he stands before the woman as she's about to give birth. So once I found this sign, that pretty much solidified the fact that this was the middle of the tribulation, which means if we look somewhere three and a half years before this, we should be able to find the start. Now at that time, I was still under the impression that this would be the exact middle of the tribulation. So I went back 1,260 days, just like many still do today, and that ends up on April 12th. The problem with that is that there's nothing happening on April 12th. And not only that, but if we go with April 12th, these two verses don't work anymore. The nearest blood moon before April 12th is in 2011, which means that these verses are talking about before the day of the Lord, the moon is going to be turned to blood, and that's two and a half years before this? I don't think so. If these two verses are to be taken literally, then it can't be 1,260 days to the start. And that's where Daniel 12.11 comes in. From the time you see the sacrifice taken away and the abomination of desolation set up, there's 1,290 days. Now Daniel 9.27 says that it's a seven-year period. It's not a seven-year plus 30-day period. And if we take 1,290 days and add to it to get seven years, that's 1,230 days. So that is what we subtract from this point in time, which is right here, 
and that takes us to May 14th. Now May 14th is very interesting. First of all, it lets us fulfill these two verses out of the Bible. It's also Israel's 66th birthday. It's second Passover. There's a bunch of stuff all associated with this day. This sign up in the heavens is actually a year-long sign that we are already into. I talk about that in this video. It is a sign similar to what happened in Bethlehem Star. That sign is a year-long sign. It is very similar to this one. Now, when I originally found this sign, I made this video. This is my second video I ever did. And in that video, I talk about Daniel 12:11 and these two verses here, Acts 2:20 and Joel 2:31. But I didn't know half of this stuff that was in here. That's why I need to make another video bringing everything together. Now, after I found this sign, which I got from this sign through Daniel 12:11, I got to thinking somewhere seven years from here and about three and a half years from here we should be able to find the sign of the Son of Man out of Matthew 2430. Now I ran into a problem in that seven years after May 14th, 2014 is May of 2021 and there was no sign in the heavens. But three months before that, I found this. Now I believe this is the sign of the Son of Man. Jesus is only known by the cross. He's not known by any other sign. Now the problem with that is, this is not exactly seven years after this sign. I had given in a couple of my other videos a possibility of what might do that, but we didn't have the full information to be able to come to a conclusion. So at that point, I kind of hit a dead end. So I started looking around back at the start, way back over here, and I found this cross which I talk about in this video and I explain in this video and then I compare this cross to this cross in this video. Now I want to take a minute and talk about this conjunction between Venus and Jupiter that happens twice back in the Bethlehem star video. Now Jupiter is known as the king planet. Planet is ancient Greek. It means wandering star. So all of the planets back in the ancient days were known as wandering stars. They didn't know them as planets as we know today. That's how we get the 12 stars in the Revelation 12, great sign in the heavens. So when we see this conjunction, it is saying king with Venus. That is what we see the first time back in the Bethlehem star video. Right after the first conjunction, in Bethlehem star of Venus and Jupiter, we watch Venus drop down a little bit and Mercury the messenger comes by and circles it to show the wise men or the magi whose star this belonged to. That showed us that Venus is the star, wandering star or planet, that represents Jesus in the heavens. Now after this, Venus makes its trek on around the constellations and Jupiter takes over. Jupiter, the king planet, crosses Regulus, which is the king star, which is part of the lion. It would be right here in this corner. It passes it, it goes into retrograde motion, passes it again, and then turns back around in prograde motion and passes it again. And that's when Venus comes back all the way around and makes another conjunction with Jupiter. Right after that conjunction, Venus drops down and stands in the sky to point the wise men to where Jesus was born. So this shows us that Venus is representative of Jesus in the heavens. For confirmation of this, Jesus refers to himself in Revelation 22.16 as the bright morning star. Venus is the bright morning star. That shows us that the king... Jesus is on the cross right here in the sign of the Son of Man. Now, after I had found this sign, I started looking for this sign again. I spent months on it, could not find it. I had finally just completely given up, and the Spirit popped something into my head, and that's where this video came about. Now, once I found the seven angels, I could try and work on the seventh angel, which is, was my theory in previous videos of how the days are shortened. The days have to be shortened to bring all the day counts into alignment. And that brings this sign of the Son of Man to the right day. 
in that day's shortened video, I give you the first draft of my timeline. This is the new timeline, and as I add videos or find new information, I'll be adding it to this. Okay, so we have the middle of the tribulation that comes right out of the Bible. From that, we find the start of the tribulation, which has got all this coincidence happening on it. From there, we go seven years in the future, and we find the sign of the Son of Man. After I found that, then I can go back here and I can look in between there to find this sign. And now we have the whole picture. We've got all the signs out of the Bible that show us where we are in time. So I hope you understand what I'm showing you. This is all right out of the Bible. It's the tribulation period. We've got the beginning, we've got the middle, we've got the end, we've got the signs in between, we got the signs long ago. God is real and there is no time left. If this is true, I mean, if, if it seemed remotely true, you need to take this into consideration, okay? It means there's no time left. That would be the confirming of the covenant. So is May 14th the day that the covenant is confirmed? It's three and a half years before this. It's seven years before this. It has all this coincidence on it. It just seems like it could be the day, but we really don't know. Now, if you're watching this video and it's after May 14th and somewhere in the previous few months there's been a big bunch of people disappear all around the face of the earth, you're going to go want to watch this video also and participate in it. So the big question is, do you know Jesus? He said that in the end times there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. Here's the signs. Time's up.